Hey, good everyone, Kojima Atashi, and welcome back to the Inline G Flute Podcast with me, your host, motherfucking Inline G. Lads, I've had to change the intro. I can't put the episode number in anymore. There's two reasons. Number one, I've lost count. To be honest, when we got past 10, I had to start taking my socks and shoes off before every episode. And now that we're in the 40s, I've lost the run of myself. I've got no fucking clue what number we're on. But number two, and more importantly, I'm preparing myself for a big trip to the US of A for the NFA, and I am banking a load of episodes. As well as the fact that Bayer Leverkusen and my football team might be about to win the treble, and if that happens, I will be on the piss for about two weeks. And if that has happened by the time this podcast comes out, please someone go and check my pulse. Today's episode is the purest form of inline G core. It's a world-class flute player who's also a mate of mine. We woke up hungover in my flat and we jumped onto the podcast with a pair of pickled brains to talk about the big topics of the Glasgow music world. So my guest this week is French flute superstar, superstar, said that well, and knitting virtuoso, Elise Brie. Elise and I met years ago in Cologne and we often sat and drank Guinness to 5am in the morning having the conversations that this podcast is built on. Elise now lives in Mainz, but she found herself in sunny Cologne very, very, very last minute last weekend. And of course, we bumped into each other in the pub and we agreed we'd have one and go home. And there, sure, we were, 4am, sure as houses, in the pub, walking home to get a kebab and birthing the idea of a podcast episode. 11am the next morning, et voila, here we are. Elise chats about her experience as a proper prodigy in the French flute system. Also about her time studying in the Paris Conservatoire as a teenager and making her orchestral debut with Paris Opera at fucking 18 years of age. It's ridiculous. Having played with the finest orchestras in Europe during her freelance career, she has recently found a permanent position here in Germany and is living her best life. Therefore, this has become a surprisingly warm and gentle episode. Perfect if you're hungover too. Now, for the regular listeners, skip ahead. You know what the crack is. But for everyone else before then, the Inline G podcast is free and always will be free. That's a guarantee. However, if you want to donate to the podcast, you can now do so through the Patreon. On the screen now is the address. And for the audio listeners, that is patreon.com forward slash the Inline G Flute Podcast. It costs five euros or dollars or pounds per month. And with that, you're keeping this podcast alive. You get four episodes a month. And the Patreon is the price of a pint. If you saw me in the pub and you thought, fuck, I love this podcast, I'd love to buy my pint, do it virtually. I do everything around here on my own. Marketing, graphic design, research, scripts, audio production, video production, ad infinitum. Becoming a patron helps generate a regular income for this podcast, meaning I can turn down other work to focus on it. And it also lets me travel to meet the best flute players in the world. As a thank you, you guys get to ask them your questions and you get the episodes a little bit earlier than everyone else. So if you can afford it, please sign up over there. It makes the world of difference and you can unsubscribe at any time. And to the people who are subscribed, fucking God bless you. You've made my life so much better with it. I'm achieving my dreams with this podcast and your support is genuinely the only thing that's keeping this thing going at the minute. I'm so thankful. So if you can afford it, sign up. If you can't, don't worry. People who can't afford it are paying for you to listen for free. So here is this week's very hungover Inline G with Elise Brie. <clears throat> yeah, for the audio listeners then, you can hear my throat is not the best. And for the video watchers, I am wearing sunglasses because I'm hungover as shit. <laughs> and we're doing a very spontaneous podcast today because Elise is in town. Yay. And yeah, we were back to the scene of the crime last night. Do you know what? That's actually where we met. That is where we That's met. That's the first time we ever hung out. We I was had, thinking about we that. Had, we had no idea we were flute players. I didn't know Do you remember that night? I do. And I remember Abby who worked there. And she oh, was like, yeah. She was so nice. But you guys, you're both flute players. And we were like, oh my God. Yeah. And that was it. Because you're a big nerd and I'm a big nerd. And that we was true, yeah. There was a very nice moment to bond. Yeah, because it doesn't happen very often. So this is Barney's. But not anybody knows Barney's, I suppose, Barney Valley's <laughs> pub, but I you should know it is the know. best pub yeah. in the world. It has the best Guinness. In Cologne, definitely. Yeah. I think the Guinness is on par with what you get in Ireland, which is the biggest compliment I can give it. Like, it does taste like Irish Guinness. Very, very good um, but I remember, yeah, I just moved to Cologne. I don't even think I moved here. I think I was just visiting to get some lessons. And then I was at the bar on my own, like the sad act I am. And then the girl at the bar asked me, what do you do for a living? And I was like, oh, I'm a flute player. And normally that's a very weird thing to say to people. And her reaction was, oh, the girl over there is a flute player. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure there's two professional flute players in the same bar right now. I went over and you fucking were. Yeah. And, was and then I, think I always remember- I excited that I'm French. You were like, oh my God, I'm Just the way to French. say that, just the way to say that, which we'll talk about a lot in this podcast because I get upset. I've had more French flute players than anyone else. That's definitely mm-hmm. sure. At this point, it must be. You're the f- fourth French flute player. There you go. Are you third? Julian Magadie and- 
Like the Alexi. Mm -hmm. There you are. You're the fourth mm -hmm. flute player. Fuck. We love French people. Yeah, but I remember at the end of the night you were giving me your Facebook or Instagram and you said your surname was Brie. And I was like, <laughs> like the cheese? And you're yeah. like, I actually specifically remember in saying, saying in French, come to fromage. Mm -hmm. I was very proud of myself mm -hmm. as well for speaking French. But yeah, you're not, uh, yeah, we did meet in Cologne five years ago. I think it's been longer. I've been living here for five years, but I, okay. I visited a lot before. I think you were living here already. I, I think. How long have you? How long did you live in Cologne? I lived in Cologne over over nine years, and then I, yeah, moved to Mainz for the job. Yay! So we should probably start there. Then why did you move to Cologne? I. Ah <laughs> oh, man, I was done with um, friends. To be honest, I was. Okay, actually, that's before we go into that. Let's do this. Okay, sorry. So that's why this I is the hungover brain not working right. <laughs> let's go from the start. Then, so you're yeah, French. Yeah, Just I am doesn't French. Know, no. I'm sorry. Where about some fancy from? Belfort. Belfort, and Belfort that is, is near Basel and Freiburg. It's near the so Swiss border. Down. Uh, yeah, it's under Alsace. Ah, okay. I know yeah. where you are. It's very, very, very cute. Apparently, city. a very beautiful place. Yeah, I've got a, yeah. There's a big festival there as well, isn't there? There is. The, yeah, oh, yeah. you saying there's like a, a huge rock festival? Yeah. And there's good that we get this headline in this year. <laughs> is a candle. Uh, yeah, so I'm from Belfort, and then. So you started the flute quite young. Yes. You started very young, didn't you? Six. But I wanted to start when I was three. There, um, there was like a wood, wind, wood wind. Yeah. Quintet that came and they played Pet and the Wolf. They came oh, to okay. And that was. And the... I, that, that's my first like musical memory. I was like, that's it. I want to be a flute player. And, and that's I remember when you fell in love with My father them. like picking me up from the school, and I was like, oh, I want to learn flute. Yeah. And that was it. And and no, I was too small. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you can't. You're three, and I thought it was very unfair. So I waited for three years. They mm -hmm. tried teaching me the piano. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then I remember my very first lesson and I was, yeah, I never stopped. But yeah, so you pick up the flute. Sorry. Yeah. At what age did you realize, like, I, I'm going to speak, I'm going to talk you up on your behalf, yeah. but it is fair to say you were a prodigy at that age. I'm going to say you were a prodigy because <laughs> you were a prodigy. I, I think yes. And I had, uh, I had a good teacher, the, the woman who started mm -hmm. me, Fabienne Boineau. Mm -hmm. um, I adored her. She was very kind. She was very very motivated to work with me and we did lots of like etude mm -hmm. and lots of scales and so I had like yeah I think I was good very quickly and I remember when I was I did competitions and everything mm -hmm. when I was 10 ish they were like oh you're gonna get into Paris and stuff and did it say NSM yeah at that age they, they were like oh you soon someday soon okay. you'll not be able to do the exam and stuff and I mean yeah things were did. not great at home so I was I had that goal of leaving. Yeah. And just for the people watching and they understand the system, when you're going to the CNSM, you can't go in younger, can you? You don't have to wait until you're 18. No, you can. You can go younger. I would not recommend it. I would never do it again. I would never send anyone. Yeah, because you live there, don't you, as well? You live yeah. at the building in the conservatory. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it's... I like, I studied in the, in the conservatory when I was 15. Mm -hmm. That's when I got in. Yeah. I was way too young. It was too much pressure. I was too young... I was not ma not mature enough, I think, to yeah. understand all of that, to withstand the pressure as well. Yeah. I would never send anyone there so young. I think it's rubbish. It is quite a lot of stress. And moving away from home in 15 to go study, and it was like really intense. I moved two years before that. I moved okay. two years before that to study with Philippe Lesgourg in saint Oh, Jose. yeah. And that was great. That he's was great. He's a teacher great. at the Academy as well, I he's, think. He's a lovely man, a lovely teacher. He, I adored him. Yeah. Who, does he, who did he play with? Did he play orchestrally? Um, he gigged a bunch. Yeah. I did like a bunch of like um, stage music at the opera with him oh. afterwards. Okay. And okay. that was fun. And I, I adored him. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. He was at the Economy Mad as well when mm -hmm. I was there. And people always spoke very highly of him. I watched his yeah. class once, I think. Really sweet guy. Very nice, very gentle. Mm -hmm. Which is quite rare in the French flute world, to be totally honest. Which we'll probably get on to that now. But is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I talk so much in this podcast about the French flute school and this idea of the playing, but and I've talked about the system of the conservatoire in France, but what I don't really mention as much is how many people went through that system. Most of them are broken by it. Like a lot of people who go into the CNSM and stuff, we hear about all the success stories, obviously, but everyone else, they're fucked. They're fucked from the whole experience. It's an incredibly intense place. It is. I don't think, and it's, I don't know how, it, I can't speak for how it is now. Yeah, okay, that's but important. But when yeah. I was there, which is like 20 years ago. Wow. 
But also, you were you were very young as well. So yeah, I say that. and I'm <laughs> not very young anymore. Um, uh. But yeah, 20 years ago, it, it broke me and it broke so many people. I think there was so much, so much pressure, so much expectations. Also, like, because I think because I was there when I was 15, oh, yeah. they were like, oh, she's a genius. And, and I, it was expected of me to win, you know, competitions and yeah. get a job like as quickly as possible and, and be the big name. Yeah, you know? so, yeah. And uh, it didn't happen. And then, you know, you're 19 and you're told like you missed your, you missed the mark. At and 19 you're, and you're over there that's ridiculous at 19 <laughs> to think your career is already over it's stupid but what do you think it is about it that makes people that makes it so difficult is it the pressure of you need to get out and win a job in a top orchestra i suppose that is the expectation of the snsm isn't it i think at the time it was most like more you know win a competition okay. be, a, be a soloist be a famous oh, wow, soloist okay. even to that level wow and then you know get an orchestra job and yeah i don't know there is it's uh, <laughs> There's too many people for the the amount of jobs we have. There is. You can't yeah. send like the whole class twelve people to an audition and expect twelve people to win. No, of course not. It's fucking yeah. ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Yeah, it even is you nonsense. look nonsense. Like, well, you know as well, but like, if you go on the, I don't know what people in North America use, but go on like Muvac or those places where there's job <laughs> postings, yeah. there's like three for float, maybe I, on a good I, day. I, I have a job now. I ah, don't check auditions yeah. anymore. That's true. Yeah, you're, I do not. You're wish out to of the play. circle. That's yes, true. I am. Um, well then, oh, yes, I am. when you were in Paris though, you did gig already, didn't you start gig professionally with orchestras? Yeah, when I, uh, I think, yeah, when I was 18. What was your first one? Do you remember your first professional gig? Yes, well, I did like Orchestre Ostinato, which mm-hmm. is like for, you know, younger people, yeah. like you learn to play in an orchestra. And then my very first professional gig was at the opera. Like the Paris opera? <laughs> the Paris opera, your which first is the, gig was the yeah, Paris Yeah, they opera. called me, I think, two hours before the first rehearsal or something. What the fuck? And it was uh, St- uh, Stravinsky, La Symphonie en Trois Mouvements. Oh, oh so it was a, a concert symphonique now, it's like a symphony concert? It was, I don't know, we were no, we were playing in the pit, but um, okay. it was like, St- I remember Stravinsky. And I was like, oh, uh, yes, of course, I will take the metro and I will come. And that was my first fucking gig. In the fucking Paris Opera? Yeah, it was crazy. First flute or second flute? No, second, crowd? second. Okay. Who's playing first? Claude. Oh, Claude Lefebvre? Yeah. No, yeah, okay. Yeah. It was nice. It was very, very, very nice playing with her. And I remember, like, we rehearsed in, in Bastille first. Yeah. But then we re- we played in the pit in uh, Opera Garnier. In Garnier, fuck. <gasps> yeah, for anyone that doesn't know, you should look up. There are two opera buildings in Paris, and it's yeah. the same company, so it's both up in the Paris. Yeah, yeah. But I think the general rule is Bastille is the modern one. It's more for Wagner style operas, isn't and it? And it's so big. It's yeah, Bastille's so enormous. Do you know what it always reminds me of? Have you ever seen Star Wars? Yeah, of course I have, <laughs> darling. <laughs> the second episode of Star Wars, where they go attack of the clones, where they go to that like planet, Camino, where all like, the wee clones uh-huh. are getting me Bassi reminds me of that planet. Yeah, fair enough. But it's like it's huge, so it's like a spaceship. It's so big. But then Garnier is probably the one people know then. It's the Paris Garnier. It's like mm-hmm. the big old beautiful palace. And it's and called the Chagall. Yeah. The, the Le Plafond. Yeah, the big roof, the big beautiful. Uh, it's a gold yeah. roof, isn't it? I don't remember. I'm trying to think of the head. But it's gold, the painting. isn't it? It's like you see in the pit and, and it's stunning. I missed so many entrants that day, the first rehearsal there. Why? Because I was like, yeah, just staring up at yeah. it. And then genuinely they were like, oh, don't worry. Everyone does that when it's the first day. I'm going to stop right Yeah, it's blue it's and gold, blue. yeah. It is ridiculous. Do you know what all these rooms are used for as well? It's like perfume adverts mm-hmm. and like Dior and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're always shot in the pattern. Oh, Paris Garnier is one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. It's so, um, it's so beautiful. And the actual, not even just the concert room itself, but the whole building is incredible. It's all gold and ornate. Yeah. But yeah, there's two buildings then in the Paris Opera, but they're the same company. So yeah. the orchestra will... I think they do split up sometimes, don't they? And do two at they one have, night? They're, I mean, like every opera house is, they have so many musicians in uh, the orchestra, so they yeah. can have like, you know, these many operas running at the same time, and the ballet, and maybe like a symphony yeah. work and stuff. Uh, and, yeah. But yeah, that was, that was my very first, first concert. Was <laughs> gig. Paris opera. What, age, what age are you at that time? 18, maybe. Okay, gigging with Paris Opera at 18 is prodigy. Like, that's obscene. Oh, 19, maybe. No, I was still in conservatoire. Yeah, 19, I would say, maybe. Now. That's ridiculous. Gigging with Paris Opera at 19 years old. That is incredible stress. One of the best orchestras in the world. And as a flute player as well, you think of all the people that have held that job as principal flute in there. There's a lot of pressure playing in Paris Opera. I, I had so much fun. I had so much fun. Not the first one I saw at the break. It was like skinny jeans were a thing. Okay. 
And there and, is hardly uh, not anymore. We've talked about this last the, night. The, how do you call that? Le pied pour la flute? The thing where you put your foot. Oh, the stand? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It got stuck in my skinny jeans, so I tripped. <laughs> and I had the tea, and I spilled my tea everywhere. Oh, and I fuck. had to go to the toilets to pick up like toilet paper oh. to fucking clean it. And I was like, oh, I'm getting no. anxiety because I'm too hungover for that story. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> so that was my very first you. rehearsal for my first gig. But I'm known to be a clumsy person. Yeah, you are. But yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, see, let's talk about that quickly because you don't have your fruit with you because this is really a spontaneous podcast. It is. You arrived in Cologne I, yeah. yesterday. It's a last minute yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And all we've done is drank and be hungover. So, yeah. But you don't have your fruit with you. But you did get. But I don't flute. drink alcohol anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, true. You were off the alcohol. To be fair, you did seven weeks yeah. off, but you deserve yeah, a drink yeah. after yeah, seven yeah. weeks off the booze. Yeah, fine. <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't have the flute with me. But I got a new one in February. Mm -hmm. And what is it? It's the best. Um, it's a Muramatsu. Yeah. 9K with like silver plate, um, mm. li li keys. keys. And then the head is a Lafin 14K. Oh, it's so that, nice. I never thought. Flute. Yeah, yeah. That's I a Rolls Royce line. It's a very nice flute. I'm that having fun. And I didn't think I would go back to playing gold. I played gold for a bit, was miserable, went back to silver, found did my sound. Did you play gold again. before? I did. And I really hated this. I lost my sound identity. In what sense with the gold? I'm it was, I curious. think, it was like a very like a one pony trick situation. You know, I think one that horse, is, yeah, <laughs> one trick pony, yeah. That. <laughs> one pony, one horse. <laughs> um, and it's um, I was very sad. I was very miserable with it. And then I came back to silver, found my sound again. Like I like a sound okay. that's a bit like creepier and yeah, a bit of edge you know, like it, when you walk in a bakery in France and you can see like an eclair and it's like shiny and this and yeah. then you know the cream is gonna do oh, this no. and see this me too. This is <laughs> this is how I see like the sound and and so yeah, I didn't oh, think wow. I would go. Okay. Yeah. But well, what were you playing before? What was your fruit before the silver one? Almeida. Oh yeah. And Wait, Jack Moore. Okay. I'm obsessed with that flute. Oh, is it Jack Moore? Amazing. Jack Moore head. No, yeah. Almeida head joint Jack Moore flute. Mm -mm -mm. All the way around. All the way around. Okay. That's it's the flute of my life. I'm that is a that yeah, that's a rare flute to I pick one of them up. There's not many Jack Moore flutes talking about anymore. No one knows that brand. And you know how it works. It's like English I gigged in like big 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 orchestras down. and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and it carried. I played first in Gertz and yeah. For so many like operas yeah. and concerts, and it, the sound carried. It's so weird for me to think you play. Think if you play on gold, you were one of the few players I think sounds great on silver. You were made for silver. You know, I was yeah, and then I tried that flute in February, and then it was interesting. I had the quintet gig. I love that quintet so much, and um, the clown. Win quintet, yeah. Yes, yeah. the clownet guy I think has a very similar understanding and view and relationship to sound as I have okay. and air and all that yeah. and um, so I, I played a bunch for him and for the quintet and it came very clear that that even though it's a gold flute she she she, she goes with me she, okay we, I can do gritty I can do I can do all the, the scrumptious things I like do you think that's do. to do with it's only but it, because it's only 9k it's not 14k or 20 the head one. is 14k okay because I, I think isn't that the thing that have the more What's that? What's the word? You know, I have no idea what she, why she does the things I okay. want her to do. It's but just... we, oh, fuck, sorry. But um, it works very well. Yeah. I have fun with her and I don't have to work a lot. That's uh, yeah, I suppose nice. that's all you want, isn't it? Yeah, I think, and yeah. One thing I have to ask you about then, you've switched your offset gene now. <laughs> Boy do I struggle. Heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you were saying you only got it because like if you find a great flute. It doesn't really matter. It you just, doesn't. You just go with it, don't Your you? G's are gonna sound a bit empty and yeah. hollow for a bit. You yeah, know? <laughs> it, it feels weird though. I did the opposite. I went from offset to inline, and it is it's weird. It was weird switching, but it I got is, used to it. It's super weird, but I, yeah. How are you finding it so far? Well, ugh, it's a bit of a struggle, and also I've been sick, so I haven't been practicing that much. True. No. Um. But I think I just have to do some scales and, and stuff and I'll be fine. Yeah, you're not worried about it then? I just love yeah. that fruit so much. Yeah, it's worth so, it then for that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 100%. And why did you play Inline G before? Because you're French? I don't know. That was the most French answer very... in the world there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well. I don't if you ask me like the, the e split mechanique and all this, oh. I have no idea. Mm. I try a flute, if we get on, we get on. I love um, that, yeah, that's the way it should be. Just enjoy the instrument. Yeah. Don't get too obsessed over these things. Yeah. I, I obsess about like practicing and exercises and understanding like all the technical way yeah. of playing the flute and the, that's my my nerdy thing with flute. You're but very nerdy with the flute, yeah. Oh, fuck me. 
Yeah, but those kind of things, like the actual yeah. technicalities of playing the flute. Oh my God. You're very good at that kind of stuff. We've had some really great conversations about minor thirds in the pub before. That's why I love it's teaching great. so much. Yeah, you're teaching a lot as well. I teach a bunch, yeah. I have, uh, I have a class in the Peter Cornelius Conservatory of Mind. <laughs> <laughs> not sponsored unfortunately <laughs> i love i love my students they're amazing yeah. they're they're teenagers and i love teaching them and uh, what but kind I, of things do you like what how do i word this like do you use things like tafnel gobe moi studies do you use all those really french things or have you no. sort of broke away from that a little bit no i don't no. i don't i should probably make them do more scales and stuff i think my I, I don't have that much time with them. Most yeah. of them has like, they have 30 minutes. And most of the work I like, I do with them, we do a lot of like sound work. Can you tell yeah. I'm obsessed with sound? We do lots <laughs> of like <laughs> oh, I know. body breathing sound work. And my, my whole thing is, I, I want them to know, I tell them like they're responsible for the sound they create. Yeah. I give them tools and I support the vision of that. the sound, you know? I, I, I want them to know you know, they go home and everything we do in a lesson that they can open the toolbox and be like, okay, my problem is I this. I love that analogy. What can I, you know, what can I, what That's exercise, it. what tool can I use? Yeah. And it's so funny because when I was in, in Paris, in conservatoire, yeah. you know, we would start the lessons, the technical lessons with like pause de son, long notes. Yeah. I was terrified. Really? Because you'd start playing and it was like, no. <laughs> but why not? Can I say that? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, we can edit this it was, it was like, no, everything was a no, you know? And mm. like for me, pause de son was like the thing I was dreading. So just to clarify that for the Americans and non It's just players. like you play like a G and an F and they're like slurred. gebunden, yeah. <laughs> slurred. And then, yeah, so like the and first, then like F, the, E and E, D. And yeah, F, so like e the first page of the lesson, now you think about Mois. Da, da, uh, okay. Yeah, if, you, if you say so. You uh, but then, no, I don't. Guys, it's what I've learned. It's you just... played in every major French orchestra. You've studied the same as seven. You don't know the first piece of the last night. The noise. That makes me think, think that we're all French wrong. For... Yeah, yeah. You're French. I mean, I know Tafanel. Like Tafanel is my uh, Tafanel Gobert. Like the scales and stuff. I used to practice them in my room when I was that, a kid. You know, and I yeah. read a book at the same time. But back to my students. Every lesson we start, I'm like, how do you want to start? Do you want to Ooh. play something? Do you need to warm up well. and stuff? Yeah. And they always say, all of them, every lesson, they want to warm up. They want to do long notes and they want to, yeah, do yeah. sound work. And I love that. I think that's important as well. Because like, I, I used to hate that when I went to, I'm not saying which teachers, but there were certain teachers I went to where you had to be warmed up before you went in and they would be furious if you went to a lesson and you weren't warmed up. Even if it was fucking eight o'clock in the morning or half seven in the morning, be like, why haven't you warmed up? Because like, it's eight o'clock in the fucking morning. That's why I haven't warmed up. And I always give my students the chance. I always say at the start, have you warmed up? No. Do you want to warm up together? Great. It's part of your lesson. And it's you can the use best your because then, you, you know, I like, okay, there is no, I when I play, this is where my brain goes to German language. I never play for nothing. Like, I'll, I'll yeah. treasure, I'll, I'll take care of every fucking note that comes yeah. out of my instrument. Because I find, like, <laughs> the sound, okay, why, why do you play music? Like, I play because... I love playing and practicing because I find what I create with my instrument serves me. Mm. The sound I create, I can, I can, if I, if I miss, miss like a bit of hope, a bit of light, a bit of warmth, a bit of goodness, I, these are all things I can create with my sound. Yeah. So I can produce a sound that can heal me, that can help me, that can serve me and my well-being. Why am I saying this? That's beautifully put. That it's, it sounds very fucking that was like cheesy, poetry. but to be honest, this is why I like practicing. I love practicing. You do love because practicing, Because I get yeah. into a room and I'm like, ooh, and I take my flute and it, good day, bad day, doesn't matter. I'll be like, ooh, what do I like? What do I not like? How do I change that? And then your brain goes into like, ooh, what's a good exercise for that? And and there is, and then, you know, I don't fear anything on the flute anymore. Doch, I fear um, fucking Carnaval des Animaux. This one is not Okay, we all fear that one. La Volia, yeah, yeah. ooh la la. No, yeah. I've played that one. But you've played that in the Norgas, you've played that in the Luz yes, as well. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. And then, oh, How did it go? yeah, yeah, I've played. Oh, it was fucking terrifying. It's awful. And do you know what's so stupid about <sighs> that piece as well is it's not really a serious piece of music. No. It's not really important. We get very stressed about this funny air thing. And it's not, when you play it in a concert, it's usually a children's concert. I mean, in the, the clarinet before, she's like, cool, cool. <laughs> Are you for <laughs> it's real? It's fucking ridiculous. This is the thing you're doing. I have to. Yeah. Nah. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, the clarinet gets off like no. But yeah, no, otherwise, I'm not scared of anything on the flute. Oh, that's fascinating. Because seen... everything has an answer. That's fair, yeah. yeah. I love the way you have a real attitude towards that. Every time I talk to you, I want to go and practice as well. You can <laughs> the... I'm not going to practice today, obviously. I like that. I'm not practicing but, today. Yeah, no. fair I'm enough. way too hungover after fair this. Enough. I'm going for a kebab and a nap. But we were talking earlier, you were saying, just when you were thinking about languages, because obviously you've lived here a long time, you speak English, French, German. We were talking last night about this, and again, you're going to have to remind me because a lot of the conversations last <laughs> night about them. Have had, like, the airport. <laughs> oh no, that was fucking funny. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Jesus, you totally fuck. Oh, that's coming back to me. Do you want to tell the listeners what you said to me last night in total seriousness without realizing what you were saying? The airport. Yeah. yeah, go tell them what you said. To me last night. <laughs> tell them the realization you had. I last think night. I had like. <laughs> so I was thinking of like I'm flying to Greece in two weeks oh. and I'm like oh the German word for airport is Flughafen yeah. which literally is what well, Hafen is what? Hafen is a harbour yeah and Flug is <laughs> fly. a fly thing, and yeah. I was like wow it's like for boats but for fly yeah and then I was I was like <laughs> mind blown and then I thought about the English word and I was like fuck it's the same a port like for boats and air like the air yeah. and I was like oh, but what is the French word and I was like oh, aeroport I'm poor like I'm poor for, for boats for air <laughs> That wasn't what I was going to talk about, but that was fucking funny last night because you were so. You, it's like you had an epiphany. Like, <laughs> yeah, we know that's why they're called airports. Sorry. <laughs> so, what I wanted to say though is when we got back last night, because I don't know what fucking time we left the pub, but I actually can't remember what time we got on. And then we got back here, and then we were struggling a little bit because we got a very spicy kebab. <laughs> so, we couldn't really talk that much either. And we were like taking air and going, mm-hmm. and then trying to talk. But you were telling me all about. Um, ah, articulation. Well, yes, and how languages play a part in that. It's so big. So like, you think, like, because we were talking about the French flute school and you were saying one of the big things about it is the French language and oh, the way French yeah, people speak yeah. and the difference between... Explain this thing, can you tell me about the T's mm-hmm. between French and German? Yeah, I love so this. like when we speak French, it's everything here. When yeah, we have the um, the um, uh, and it's very nasal and I think that explains, like, the way the French sound is. It's mm-hmm. more like... I would say it is more like this. Yeah. And then you have like the English sound that's a bit more like, you know, yeah. here and here because well when yeah. you say like here and stuff, it's more here in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. And then the Germans we were talking about articulation, detaché and stuff. Mm. Like the French one is like ta ta ta, you know, like a, I always say like ballerine, like, like ballerine feet, you know? Oh yeah. 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 Because we say, you know, un tonton, un tata, ta 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 it's right all like, here. Yeah. So most of the articulation I think it, it's mostly tongue and not that much air. Yeah, yeah. And then the German one is when they say a word with a T, it sounds like there's an an H afterwards. Yeah. Like in France, okay, the word for um, aunt, tante. Tante, tante yeah. it's very, t- t- yeah. you know, very dry. In German, they would say tante. And it's yeah. t- And you hear you that hear when the they H play. Behind it. That's you do, you hear that when they play. And you think that affects the, the articulation on the foot? Uh, absolutely, because they don't use the same area of the tongue. They, do, they don't use as much of the tongue. And I find like they tend from my small understanding of my uh-huh. students and stuff. But I've been teaching in Germany for what, nine years now? A long Eight time, years. yeah. yeah. The, the, the tongue, it stays in the middle of the mouth instead of like going and having a chill or, you know, it stays. Like, oh, it stays. Like, yeah, yeah. In a, oh, okay. And that, that plays a lot on... That has a big impact on the sound. I work on that with my students at the moment. Yeah. It's the thing. It's fun. And Do you it's think that it's worth like teaching them not how to speak French, but learning how to pronounce words in different languages, like we work learn on different that. T's? Yeah, we work on yeah. that. Yeah, that's fascinating. Because I suppose like, when you're learning the flute, when you're told articulation, you're just told to essentially use to, but to is different for different people. Then absolutely. And that's why I never thought about. That is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I have like a <laughs> when we want like a softer tone uh-huh. or like you know what's playing a softer yeah. tune whatever i found the best way with them to soften the tongue is to do like a d like a donut yeah oh. so i call that the donut song oh. <laughs> the donut tongue that is great it's, and it works it it, it works I'm so hungry. Yeah. <laughs> donut <doesn't laughs> yeah that's so fascinating though like i, I remember i had a bit it. of a problem with that in france as well because i have a really minor lisp like my tongue is mm-hmm. in a really weird shape and apparently it's I not i have a lisp as well do you yeah a small one Oh, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, do you do? Yeah. yeah. Fuck, I learned a lot today. Well, actually, speaking of France, and something I, I ask every French flute player this because I do find it fascinating. The whole, quand on the code Francaise, la flute, the great French yeah. flute school. 
what is it to you? Is it the style of playing or is it the style of pedagogy or a mixture of the two? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you I say actually... pedagogy and it went like friends and pedagogy, what? <laughs> um, I'm very opinionated. Opin opinion I You're allowed to be on this podcast. Yes. Um, I think it's a way of, I think, you know, it's it's a very flamboyant way of playing. And it's what I, what I like about like French music making, it's, it's very spontaneous and you'll be like, oh, I'm going to do a color. You know, yeah. and you can play a ballet in France and play it like 25 times and, and, and you'll hear different things like all 25 times. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. the very, it's a very soloist school. It it's is, not the yeah. best at playing with people. We don't learn enough about like intonation in the sense of like how to play a third, a minor third, a major third. And this and, stuff is know. fascinating. Yeah. I love that. And it yeah. makes you a better player. But I think, yeah, the French school, and it's very virtuose, and you practice all your scales, and you play all the saucissons. You know what the saucissons? No. Well, I know a saucisson <laughs> You sec, know a saucisson sec. Old. Yeah, it's that cured sausage. Yeah. In France, what we call a saucisson is um, a piece that's very, like, it's got all the cream and all the, the fast beats. Oh, and, yeah. Okay. Like grand polonaise and all that. Oh, <clears> yeah. And all the ones from that French flute book. Yeah. So, like, I'm trying to think, like, <laughs> Chavina. Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. Oops, sorry. Louis Gann, um, is that the other one? I love this. Oh, I love that, that book. One. Yeah. Yeah. There's all those ones in it. It's all the French. It's like, it's a French music by French. I think it was, was it Jean Paul's son or someone that did the collection? Or Jean Paul's dad? I, I don't know, know but I that book I love. But yeah, all I those think two, you know, yeah. that, that's a very you French You call it a sussy song? <laughs> we... I've never heard of it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. At some point in my life, I thought I was only good at playing saucisson, though, because like you know, when you're good, when music, you're though. so good, so young, you know, they're like play fast, play fast, and so like yeah, it's mainly composers from like early 1900s, late 1800s, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. cheesy mm -hmm. salon music essentially, isn't it? It's great fun. It is great fun. It's great fun. I think yeah. And you yeah. think that influences the style of playing the flute then? For sure. Yeah. For sure. I I used to believe like French flute school was like the best technically the best it's only once i left france that i learned how to play the fucking flute yeah like, this day i think it's changed a lot like i i had no you know you talk about like support and stuff in france but no one told at least me or yeah. us at the time how to the whole like air technique i learned here in germany i also worked with them um, we had a, a singer come in in the school in cologne yeah Mind blowing! She's changed my whole way of playing. In she what she talked about like how to, like stand, how to mm. put your body where you see how my voice sounds different yeah. now. Same with the flute. If your voice, like if <clears throat> if you get your body, like the head placement, the chest placement, the hip placement, the pelvic area, the knees, the feet, everything. Yeah. See see how it resonates now. Yeah. I am not making any kind of effort. Yeah. It's it's see bam. If I were to take a flute now, it's it would it would sound, it would sound, yeah, and it's effortless. And that is not something that's really, in my experience anyway, nobody talked about that in Paris. In and that, that's the whole thing I'm obsessed with. This is why I love playing. It has to serve me, um, yeah. my mental health, my general health, apart from yeah. endometriosis. Yeah. Um, is better when my body is relaxed when mm. when I you know when and, and I can practice that with the flute. This yeah. is helping me feeling better in my body. That's such a refreshing take on it as well. You I know, love instead of being a thing of torture because oh you you eat all you eat after work and you can't crack a note yeah. and you can't play no fuck that it has to serve me. That's an incredibly good attitude to have. I well, don't think I have that. I I had to play so many auditions to win my job that you know it had oh, it had to serve me <laughs> you've done a lot yeah i see it's weird to think actually we should say that you do have finally an orchestral i do have now. a job you have I a proper have job, a job you're salaried everything's yes. great now but we've known each other what six years or something like that <laughs> um when we first met you were doing so much freelancing it was ridiculous yeah and everywhere and it, it was yeah. a pretty tough lifestyle i think for you at the time it was I lo I learned so much from it. I I I'm obsessed <laughs> with sound. So I got to play in these all these orchestras with all these, and I love playing with the oboe. I, I gigged a lot of, like on first flute, yeah. and I I love mixing with instruments, and I love like you know the sounds. Yeah. I got to f play with so many different aesthetics, so many different yeah sounds, and yeah. it was so much fun because like it's like when you when you dress up for carnival. You're like, oh, I'm going to be that person. I'm going to be that person. And you yeah, go and then, yeah. because I love all the technical bits, I was like, oh, how do they do this? And then, puff, you match them. You know, you do, oh, this week, okay, I guess that I'm playing with this. And then you go that, yeah. and that. Yeah. 
So that it made me a very like flexible player. Um, it was not boring. And then you know, like <laughs> when you have colleagues and stuff, you know there is tensions and and everything. And you, I, it, I never, yeah. you know, I didn't have like the whole. Yeah, I was never part of that. But um, the train was exhausting. But yeah, so you're now playing in the police orchestra. Tell us a little bit about what that is as an orchestra. <laughs> Describe it. It's a wind orchestra. Yeah. Which I've never done before, so I had no idea about the rep and all that. Um, it, to be honest, like with my education and also I think the level I can play at and mm -hmm. everything and all the freelancing I've done in all these big orchestras, it was never the plan to <laughs> go play to a police orchestra. But yeah. I, I auditioned <clears throat> and I met them and they were fucking lovely. Yeah. And I was so relieved that I finally had won an audition that I went in and I was like, I'll see how it goes. I don't want to audition again. Yeah. I'm, I'm having such a good time you, there. Yeah, well, we how long have you played there? It's my second season. Yeah, okay. And I've never seen you happier with a job. You, you seem like you're having a great time over and there. And they're so kind. My colleagues, they're so fucking kind. Which is they're, so important. It is. Like, I'm so used to, you know, playing and you have a feeling you need to prove to people all the time that you're, you're good and, you know, that you do exist in a world where it's all competition and this yeah. orchestra is great but wants to be this orchestra. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. And I get to play fun music. Yeah. With people. And, and, and like, no one, no one is listening for the mistake. Yeah, that's a huge difference, you know? isn't it? And then sometimes you play very well, and they're like, "Yeah, okay, cool. You did the you did the bird very well tonight." You know, yeah. and that's it. That's it. And we have fun together. It's not all okay. It's not all pink. Not all great. Some of some of the aspect of the job is not always the best. But yeah, I'm having so much fun. Yeah, and, and that like is... I played the Carmen Fantasy. You did as a, as as a soloist. Solo yeah, yes. it was, was so the... much. That's was... a saucisson. That is, oh, that's the one, yeah, that's the saucy song, yeah. See, and the like, the Francois Vaughn one, the flute yeah. one, yeah. Oh. And I think I would have crumbled before, like, I would have had so much stress and yeah. everything, but because I played and they, they were behind me, they were oh, with me on stage, so you know, and there was so. Bef before every perform performance, they were like, oh, I'm so excited to hear you. Yeah. You know what? They were genuinely like, I can't wait to hear you, and I can't wait to spend that 15 minutes playing with Amazing. you because I know it's gonna be fun. And, and, and you're carried by all that goodness and yeah. bienveillance, the word we don't know. Yeah, I still can't think about When you it, wish yeah. people well, like, yeah. you, it's carrying. And then I had so much fun performing with yeah. them. And, and I saw a few videos of it as well. You know, great. The French teaching school, to my, for me, it's, it's very mean. We learn the rough, we learn the mean, we learn the tough, we learn like, the tough love. I think that's it fucking bullshit. I think it's really shy. I, I don't like it because for every one student that it does well and it works for them, you have 19 students that are totally that broken. That very student for whom it worked then spends their whole career with tensed shoulders, mm. with neck pain, with finger pain, yeah. with psoriasis, with immune disease because of the stress yeah. and all that. This, it, it's yeah. not sustainable. It's not. And it's I also not. think like when you do all that work and all that training and the, the dream is to get into an orchestra, you should be enjoying it then. When you get the job, you should be loving your life, but they're not. No. So many top food players who play in top orchestras are stressed out all the fucking time, hit their job and go, what is the point? Why did you do all that work then? But it's just stress it's so and anxiety. Sad. It is so sad. It's so, it's, it's, I find it, it's, it really is an industry where it's really hard to exist. It's really hard to find a place. It's really hard to be a human being there. And it's, it really I, is. I, yeah. I, I, I'm going to sound very cheesy again, but you get so much more out of your students out of people from if you fucking nurture them with kindness and yeah. goodness and i i see it with myself i see it with with my, with my little students yeah. you know and i was teaching adults in cologne before and all that it works give it people goodness work. and it works they're gonna blossom and they're gonna feel safe and yeah. because they feel safe they're gonna be more creative they're gonna allow themselves you know but see. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you get to hear the music and then and then, why do we make ourselves fucking miserable why do we hurt ourselves so much and life this is, is what hard. i don't get yeah life is hard and music's like, meant to be the antithesis to that yeah it shouldn't be miserable no it is one of the craziest things for me it's it's why actually i enjoyed studying with Magali, for example so much because i didn't i don't know if I, 
It sounds bad to say, but I don't know how much of my flute plan I actually learned from Mike Lee. I don't think it was a huge mm-hmm. amount. But what I got from her was he was always so happy and excited about the music. I'm so passionate about it. And every time I came out of a lesson, I was in a really good mood. And because I was in a good mood, I went and practiced more. And it See? did me so much good. And I also think there were so many years where when I was studying with these top players, I didn't want to listen to classical music. It was my job and I was mm-hmm. separating. I, was, I, I didn't listen to it in my spare time. Mm-hmm. I had no passion for it. It was like, as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, fuck, there's the mm-hmm. flute. And that's a shame as well, because I think that tough teaching, you kill the passion for it as well, which is a problem with the industry, because then most students, most of your students in any instrument, they're not going to be professionals. No. And if you break them and they hate classical music, they're not going to go to concerts. Mm-hmm. They're not going to recommend it. They're going to hate it, and you're not going to have an audience to go to. While if you you bring up the kindness and nurturing, at least if they're not going to go professional, they'll love the instrument. They'll have a good relationship with music for sure. And that's and a, you that's can a, learn a, so a net much win. like... I, I, I've i learned to be patient with myself through practicing. I've read so, so many things, like compassionate. I've learned so many so many things with myself, you know? Which is great. I I love that. It's great to see you doing so well at the minute. And it's also good to see that you've played in all those top orchestras. You've done the whole thing. And now you're finding a bit of peace at all. It's it's really fun. I have to say, and I've always listened to lots of like, yeah, pop and jazz and yeah. Latin and I don't know, like so many other musics. And I'm having a ball playing these. Like Disney medleys and <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did a Disney medley recently, didn't um, you? Yeah. We're gonna play Beauty and the Beast for the ah. spring and summer concerts. Last year we did um, the Lion King. Do, 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 do. That was so much fun. Which one is that? The, the, is that on? Je voudrais déjà. Oh yeah. Do, no, I thought you were singing do 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 do. But that's the Little Mermaid. <laughs> that is the Little Mermaid. Yeah, that's a good song. But yeah, no, it's great. It's it's fun and it's nice to go to work and have. I know, the music he's playing is so fun. You were also telling me you do the tattoo work thing quite a lot. <laughs> Honestly, they see those kind of concerts, those are my dream. If I could do any concert in the world, and I mean, if genuinely, if you give me the choice between playing, I don't know, Beethoven 9, my favourite symphony, or Beethoven 3, probably my favourite symphony, with the Berlin Philharmonica's first flute, or <laughs> play Star Wars with the movie behind oh my God. Star Wars every fucking day. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's two different pleasures. I, I really enjoyed like all the I, and I still freelance some and I do yeah freelance with the quintet and stuff and I have so much fun still and I still love playing a good symphony and all that and I've loved I've and I've played so many operas like and the big venues and everything and I, I I've had so much fun doing that yeah. and playing all that beautiful beautiful music but I have to say right now I'm having a blast that is so playing important. other music oh. and then I it's fun it's it, some concerts i'm also gonna play like the alto recorder yeah and, and it's I, I, it's just fun it's fun which is what music should be that's the point of music it's an entertainment essentially it is we're there to entertain it should be fun for yeah. us fun for the audience yeah i also i say this a lot but when i do irish music i did it i first did irish music when i was at royal welsh when i was like 18 19 and i started a band and we like played in pubs at the weekends and all that kind of stuff it did my classical playing so much good because it was the first time in my life I can remember going out and performing and just not giving a shit and just enjoying it. And if I played a wrong note, I didn't give a shit. Nobody gave a shit. And I never stressed about it. And I played better because I had this freedom. For sure. And I just had to make sure I could take that feeling yeah. and bring it back to classical. And if I could do that, great. I re- like, I, for sure, 100%. When I, I do... <laughs> I do a bit of ukulele as well, though my nails are long now. So I'm, I'm choosing, uh, I'm choosing nails over ukulele. Shanti <laughs> <laughs> is my favorite thing. Um, but yeah, ukulele and singing. My my phrasing on the flute got so much better when I started singing. Yeah. Because I had words and I had like a story to tell instead of being like, mm, how do I want my me to sound like? Do yeah. I do I go to the soul with the me? Like yeah. suddenly you had words, you know, and and, yeah. and it helped me so much, so to much. Understand. Uh... Yeah, and also like because I was doing music without pressure and having fun you know i i yeah i got some more fun on my flute then yeah because i think you just get back to what music is essentially you get back to the core of why we make music it's something i recommend to anyone if you're doing a lot of classical music is to go and do something fun go that play is, in a bar that or is something. a very very interesting conversation i played a project with that great quintet i like playing mm. with um it was like a project on uh, theresienstadt what's uh-huh. what's in english no idea it was like a um, concentrate imprisonment slash concentration oh, camp, camp okay. you know, and you know, ah. and <laughs> so um, yeah, they brought all these Jewish people there, and 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 it was like a ghetto situation, oh, wow. and then 
it happened to that there was a lot of artists there yeah so a lot of music was written there uh-huh. like including like operas and everything oh wow okay, and fun. so they started like perform there performing there yeah i've worked on that project in german and so at first the nazis were like Ich no trying to shut it down yeah. and then it was entertaining for them too so they let it happen okay so that whole project was playing works that was written in Theresienstadt, which is a whole different level of oh. yeah and we worked that's a humbling experience it, is, sure. it, it was I'm still missing words yeah. and the quintet so we we play with an actor as well uh-huh. and he's wonderful also helps a lot for like playing to watch an actor do the thing and yeah. speak and body yeah. and all that and so we had like uh, we worked with teenagers for a whole week about the on the on the project and stuff and we had little atelier with them and they were writing and blah and we ended up mm. on that conversation like why do we do art why is art important why do we play music and and it got me thinking a lot like why i play music now is very different from when i started playing music like why do you play why do you play flute oh that is a really good question i need a podcast on its own to talk right. about that i've never actually thought about that just ask me something i don't know there's multiple factors I suppose it should. The answer I want to say is because I love it and I love the music, but that's uh, that wouldn't be correct if I said that. It's, yeah, maybe. Uh, multiple factors, yeah. Ego as well. That's uh-huh. a bit of a part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you miss? Did you miss people clapping for you during the pandemic? Oh my god! <laughs> I missed that me? so much. Oh, I t- and a, I told my flatmate I'm at an the time, and then for this. there was one breakfast. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like "Thank you." I never got that. But, oh, oh my man. god! Yeah, I'm ridiculous for that. I, I'm so bad for that mm-hmm. as well. Especially when we do gigs with the Irish band, because when you do Irish music, you're they playing for drunk yeah, people yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. in a pub, so they really will show their affection yeah, yeah. openly. And I feel like I'm fucking Noel Gallagher at Wembley. I'm always like standing <laughs> up on chairs. I'm like, all right, then we're going to play the last song now. I'm fucking, oh, I feel like I'm, yeah, it's great. It's great. But, right, well, I actually want to ask you some fun questions. I forgot to tell you, I was going to ask you these, but I ask everyone them. Okay. Um, so you haven't got any prep time in this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Normally I let my guests prepare for this, but. Go this is a it. very spontaneous Shoot. podcast. So, Shoot. do you have a favorite flute concerto? Uh, what a good answer. Um, I was obsessed for a very long time with the Blavé one. Mm. Like, I fell in love with it and I listened to it. But there's a few Blavé ones, isn't there? Uh, there's only in one. A. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, otherwise. Oh, that's a good answer. I used to love Cacciatorian as well, which is oh, not a flute concerto. Yeah, but it works great on but, flute. And you know, also like in Paris, the teacher, he would fall asleep very often during the lesson or, you know, didn't have anything to say. So you'd bring it, play, because it's 45 minutes and that was the lesson <laughs> done. You just sit and play the Cacciatorian concerto yeah. and you go, fuck me. And then he was like, great. Um, anyway, so flute concerto, I really like. Cacciatorian concerto is a good one, to be fair. I like it. There's only a handful yeah. of players that can do it justice, so it is fucking hard to do. I love, I mean, Emmanuel. He does, he does a decent job on it, yeah. yeah. Um, to be fair, Jimmy Galway's recorded as well. I have heard it. Yeah. I used to be obsessed with, um, when I was a kid, with um, Mercadante from Jimmy Galway. The E minor? Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I, who was I, I was talking about this with Julian actually as well. James Galway playing Mercadante is, it's perfect yeah. it's, it's, it's heaven because his sound is so op- operatic it's so uh, ridiculously operatic. over the top he sings yeah it's and this the music best. is ridiculously over the top is it yeah <laughs> I love it I remember I did a master class once in you know, like a like a resident like a yeah a summer course that's what I'm looking for Jesus Christ my brain is melting my Guinness has ruined mm-hmm. me I'm pickled <laughs> um, yeah I went to a summer course in Denmark in Copenhagen and Mike Lee was doing it and there was two people in the class uh, one of them was a guy called Nina Mm-hmm. French flute player Nina Polly and a guy called Mario. Mm-hmm. So Nina is very French and Mario is very, very fucking Italian. Mm-hmm. And they got in an argument once because when Maggie was teaching the Mercadante thing, she was basically just going, This is incredibly kitsch music it and is. it's just fun and enjoy it. And Mario got so annoyed at that and he's like, No, this is serious music, this is great Italian music. And Nina and Mario argued so much over because she was and Nina was like, It's kitsch, it's ridiculous, it's mm-hmm. brilliant, but it is mm-hmm. ridiculous music. And he's like, No, it's not, it's great, it's part of our Italian <laughs> culture and our heritage. Like, you guys are so fucking European, but it is kitsch and ridiculous. Yeah. It is ridiculous. I love it. Yeah. Okay, do you remember the first flute album that you bought? Do you remember asking for or you remember having? I I happened to get the Mercadant one from Jimmy. Yeah, and that uh, was that was the one. But yeah. then uh, I've never really listened to so much flute because I'm not, I I'm love flute playing, players like this. but I it's uh, can I say it's a bit boring? 
<laughs> it is a bit boring. And uh, it depends on the player. There's certain players that I can listen to all day. True. But, but I would, I, I most... would listen. I would rather listen to a good Jimi Hendrix. I yeah. Know, or... Yeah, that's what I am. Uh, no, I with. mean, I don't know. I just yeah. J- Jimmy to answer your yeah. question. No, okay. Not. That was. We'll the... do that then. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the first album in general that you bought? It doesn't have to be classical music. <laughs> yes. When I turned eleven. Mm-hmm. I, I think I know your answer to this. Actually, for, my, like for, my, for my birthday, I went to Lefnac uh-huh. with my grandma. So that's the shop where you can buy books yeah. and CDs. And you know, how did you call them in English? Les CD de titre, these little CDs. Oh, singles. Yes. Yeah. And so she got me eleven singles for my eleventh birthday. Oh, okay. So good. there was Britney. Um, what was the song? Baby, one more time. No, Lucky. Lucky is my favorite Britney song. Right. I've said this for years. People don't. Un- I think it's so underrated as a song. And he's She's so sad as well. Jesus, oh, it's I fucking cry, great. Cry, cry. That's my yeah. favorite Britney song and by then far. And there was so eleven. There was MC Solar. There was Asia. Lots of French stuff. There was yeah. um, Tonton Tonton du Bled or something. I have no Macron. idea. All the French, the good, the the yummy, fr- I, I, the stuff. French I shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else? And can you remember anything else about this? I also remember my father st- never giving back a Beatles album to the bibliotheque. Oh, 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 oh. Um, oh, a few please, please me. And oh, I was yeah. obsessed yeah. with it. I woke up to it every day for what? A, a year or two. And then, yeah, a Jimi Hendrix album that I listened to so much that when I lived with my sister in Paris, she burst it into my room someday and she was like, if you listen to it one more time, I will break the CD. <laughs> that's fucking great. Oh, so, that's cool music. Although I, my favorite of that is still Lucky. That's great. Lucky by Britney is a great answer. Britney. I'm so I will happy always with that. love Britney. And Irish music. We did listen to a lot of Irish music. I, I always tell, wanted yeah. to be Irish. I always yeah. wanted to be a ginger and Irish. Ah, well, you're you nice. Yeah, Never had it. So here. Yeah. Ah, well, you can be friends with me. You can... I don't got that. It's a pretty sweet life. <laughs> it's pretty nice, yeah. If you could switch instruments, but be as good as you are on the flute, what would you switch to? <gasps> Sorry. Um, no, switch, no, because I like what I do. But I am going to learn the saxophone, Karen. Really? Yes. I, because of do you like the, the saxophone? Uh, I used to hate it. I hate yeah. I hate classical saxophone so much. Oh, it's I have disgusting. a hatred for it. But, it's disgusting. But, so when I'm in, in the police orchestra yeah. where I play, just behind us, it's always the saxophone. Okay. We have four of them. Yeah, I, I, at first I was like, yeah, we, but we play so much like jazzy stuff and then, and, and then, oh, I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed and, and but that they're music really it's good. Incredible. Yeah. And like it was some of them that they're, they're all good. They're all really good. Yeah. And then they do like improvisation and everything. And oh. I'm obsessed. I want to be, I want to do that. I want to learn that. Yeah. I want to play jazzy stuff. And it's on so the fun saxophone. and sexy. And, and so just... I've asked them, I was like, Martin, I was like, do you think I could learn a saxophone? Have you ever tried to play it? Have you ever held Never. One? Because the fingers are quite similar. I heard I did, all of them. And like, do you know oh, what they actually have? It's great. The saxophone, great invention. The food you get it, they have an octave key. So there's a little thing that you press. Oh, it goes, whoop, well, and yeah. goes up. Yeah. It's fucking great. Yeah. Saxophone you can play easily. It's not that hard. I like, just, as I, I just want hard. to. I, because, and you know what's crazy? In my orchestra, there is so, these people, so many of them, they can do so many things. Yeah. For like different instruments. In the, yeah. Um, there's this guy, Peter. He's retired now, but he still gigs. He plays okay saxophone, you know. I know I know Peter the saxophone, yeah. you know, and sometimes he plays this saxophone and sometimes yeah. he plays this yeah. saxophone. And there was one week we had like three or four concerts. And then one day I turn my head and Peter is here. The next day I turn my head and Peter is playing the clarinet. And I'm like, <laughs> Why are you for real? <laughs> the there's a guy one? that a guy that comes gig and, and there's one time he comes, like you know, first time I see him and he plays the tuba. I'm like, Oh tuba, fun, you know. Two weeks later he comes with a fucking contrabass. <laughs> like a double the, bass. A double bass, yeah. yeah. It, what is this? That's fucking what stupid. What is this? What we can you play? Yeah. Is a flute. Flute. Maybe pick a if you make me. Right. Yeah. Right. I Fuck, that know. is great. Well, saxophone, yeah, that's saxophone. a really good answer. Yeah. Um, right, we need a blast with these last three questions because we're going to run out of time. Sorry. Have you, if you could have any career outside of music, what would you do? Ooh, um, ooh, um, have you would, ever had a wee secret fantasy for outside of course, career? I, I would be, okay, I would do some yoga teacher situation. I would teach yoga. I would have okay. a, a second hand shop where I would sell vintage that stuff. That I can see you doing, yeah. And, uh, Is professional knitting a career? Can you be a professional knitter? I was going to say, so in my vintage shop, there would be a tattoo artist coming every now and then. Yeah. It would be hygienic, yeah. obviously. Um, and then uh, we would also knit. 
and crochet. That sounds fucking lovely. Let's do that. And you can and break I our band sell, for I have, If you like vintage clothing, I have so many good pieces to sell. Oh, you are selling your But stuff, I can't yeah. be asked. Uh, so if anyone likes vintage yeah, fashion, there you are. You get, can get in touch up. with yeah. me. I have cool stuff. So That's this is what I would do. And your knitting is incredible. Uh, mm-hmm. If you could have a pint with any musician, alive or dead, who would it be? <gasps> oh. And we'll, we'll even, I'll go further. We'll set the scene. You have a pint with them in Barney's. <gasps> Obviously. On a Saturday night. Um. No, actually on a Tuesday night when it's very quiet in the pub. Just the two of you at the bar. And language is no problem. I we'll assume you speak the same language. So. Oh. Don't worry, I can cut out the silence. <laughs> you can take your time to think of um, it. I want to say like... Oh man. I always like the idea of Mozart to be fair. Ah, I was thinking like Otis Redding. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Or I would... I, I've always been... I've, oh. Victoria Beckham, I would like to have a drink with oh as well. Oh my god. Or Ravel. Or oh, then, Debussy. Yeah. I find like if I think you, Debussy be an if, you, if you write such textures, it, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, Garrett, what kind of question is this? <laughs> <laughs> Who one. do you think pick you one. are? <laughs> I will not pick one. Uh, uh, there is too many people. Everywhere. Someone French then. David Guetta. Nah. You and David Guetta for a pint of Guinness. Nah. Too hard? I can't. Okay, well the last question is maybe a not a very good one for you, but what's your favourite alcoholic or non-alcoholic drink? Shit. So what would you drink well, with this Well, okay, person? I should... Uh, technically, with the endometriosis and everything, gluten should be a no-go. Uh, it yeah. usually is a no-go. I usually don't have it, but Guinness is great. I love Guinness. You are a big Guinness girl, yeah. I, I, yes. Yeah. So I'll break the gluten rule for Guinness okay. every now and then. And what about a non-alcoholic drink? Do you have a favourite, like, soda? I love water. I'm very uh, boring. I love... Sparkling? <gasps> or um, um, like a chocolate chai tea i know it's stupid to say chai and tea i know or earl grey i love yeah tea, uh, chai, love is the, chai is the word for tea chai is tea. yeah yeah oh fuck so i love i love a good earl grey chai is the word for tea yeah for fuck's it's sake it's like what do you want to have a tea tea yeah <laughs> a spitzy spitzy <laughs> i love spitzy spitzy oh i'd be all right yeah. spitzy yeah oh i didn't actually know that there you, are. There you go there, there you are go. um sprudel wasser or normal water I pr- normal. If, if it's like a, a, a party situation then a total <laughs> yeah if you're and letting if your it's hair like down an every, yeah. we sparkle and water every day right. just water I just love water I'm, I'm that's so very good apart bad. from when you're hungover in which case you have spetty yeah spetty's fucking great ah, the butter is great I, saw, I know it. see actually the logo for Inline G was based on this mm-hmm. I got a designer and I sent mm-hmm. them that and they said make me something like that because yeah. spetty's just perfect right well I think we're nearly done uh, yeah. we've been talking for over an hour so I will edit <laughs> that down and we'll cut out some of the shit that I talked and we'll leave it at that is there anything you want to where can people find you do you want people to follow on Instagram or do you want no, no. unless they like knitting stuff oh okay well if you like because knitting my, stuff my Instagram is mostly um, knitting, knitting it is true yeah, yeah. yeah. anything so, you want to plug or anything you want to tell people about or are you happy enough then I just want to tell people you can grow and blossom from goodness beautiful it's a very appropriate thing for a hangover as well. That's lovely. It's very positive here. No, but it's, it's yeah. Great. It's well, then, we're going to head away. Thank you I'm for having for me. Nap. I'm very welcome. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to have you yeah, on. I'm sure it won't be the last time either. I think that's going to be an exhausting one for people to listen. We're like... Yeah, well, there's plenty going on. But yeah, that's what happens when you're yeah. hungover. That's what the hungover mind is. Great. Well, then, yeah. Cheerio, guys. And I'll see you as... I don't know who's on next week. I don't know what we are. It might be. This might be number 49. <laughs> I, I've, I've really stopped organizing this. It's a fucking disaster. Anyway, cheerio, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>